So now we're going to build the cogwheel train, which is right here. And we're going to start with one small frame and two large frames. And we're going to put the two large frames into the small frame like this. All right, and then we're going to need two long axles. And with the first axle, we're going to take a big gear and push it all the way to the stop. And then put it into the last hole right here. And then on the other side, we're going to add another large gear. Here's the back wheels. With the next axle, we're again going to take a big gear Push it all the way to the stop. Then we're going to count four holes in, the fourth hole, so leave three holes empty. Fourth hole, we're going to put it in, but before we go through the next frame, we're going to add a large sprocket wheel and then push it in through the next frame. And then once again, add a large gear. So now we have the front and back wheels of the train. We, we've basically com completed image number one. We're moving on to image number two. Okay, so now we're going to take two more long axles. And with the first one, we are going to have the stop on, on the right side, push it through the fourth hole, so it's directly above the axle that's below. Then push it through another large sprocket wheel. These two large sprocket wheels are next to each other. They're not on top of each other. Then push it through the opposite frame. And then we're going to add a small gear. Like this. All right. And this small gear and this large gear should mesh. And in order to keep this axle here so that it doesn't move around, we're going to add a washer and an axle stop. I'll keep it right here. All right, with the Next large axle, we are going to count four holes, one, two, three, four, to leave empty. And then in the fifth hole, add the long axle, so the stop is on this side. Put it through a short axle, and then through the other side of the frame. And once again, so that this axle doesn't, you know, move all over the place, we're going to add again a washer and an axle stop. So we're almost done with image number two. All we need to add is a chain. So the chains are made by taking the pieces in this plastic bag and fitting them together like this in order to put the chain around these two, you don't want the chain going around this bottom axle, so you actually have to put it down through in between the top sprocket wheel and the bottom axle. You probably just kind of want to get it in there without really worrying about how it fits just yet. It might take a little bit of fidgeting, and then you can fit it around the large sprocket wheel and the small sprocket wheel without going around the bottom axle. So it should look like this. It's not going around this bottom axle. And just to make sure that the chain is on, you can turn this and it looks like it's on just fine. So now we're done with picture number two and we're gonna move on to picture number three. And for that, we're going to need the motor. And you're going to want to have a battery in your motor. And the motor has these pieces right here that fit right into the frame. So we're going to push it into the frame, but make sure that this piece is on the bottom. So we're going to fit this right on. 
though it's very bottom heavy and that's because the motor is so heavy. So you might want to have a weight, maybe a battery around that we can stick in here and make it level, but we'll add that later. For now we're going to keep on building the train. We're going to add one large green sprocket right here and then we're going to add a small green sprocket wheel onto the motor and then we're going to add one more chain and you're going to want to put it around this small sprocket, the small green sprocket and the large green sprocket. Alright, so now we have our cogwheel train pretty much built. I'm going to add a weight to the back here. So let's see if our, if our train works. There it goes. Oops. And if anything feels like it's not working, just make sure that these two sprocket wheels, the green ones that are in here, are not too close to each other. You may want to move this sprocket wheel that way or that sprocket wheel the other way just to give them room. And you want to make sure that the sprocket wheels that share a chain like these two and these two are directly in front and back of each other so that the chain moves straight instead of being crooked. And there goes our train. There it goes. 